Bless Em All, a Veterans Tribute that was originally presented last year in honor of veterans during Veterans Week as a small five-person show, will now be brought to the Brothel Arts Centre with a cast of 40, which it was originally intended, for three performances on November 9th and 10th. BNTV's Doreen Barnes spoke with A.J. Benoit at a recent rehearsal. Benoit wrote the musical and will be performing in it as well. Jay, what is Bless Em All? Uh, Bless Em All is a, a musical production. It's a mu musical tribute uh, dedicated to the veterans of World War II. Who wrote this production? Uh, actually, I wrote the, the, the production. You wrote this? Yes. How wonderful. What motivated you to write this musical? Well, you know, it goes back to, you know, probably 40 years ago when I was just a young fella at the time when I joined the the Brockville Rifles, and I was in the infantry regiment, but I also played in the Brockville Rifles bugle band. And back in those days, if you think back 40 years ago, our World War II veterans are of my age right now, which was, you know, in, they would be in their 50s. Um, and the Legion Color Party, which was largely made up of World War II veterans, would carry the colors of, of our country and march in front of the bugle band. So um, we would travel all throughout Eastern Ontario and, or all parts of Ontario and into the United States. And after the parades, we would you know, go to one of the local watering holes. And the next thing you know, being a bunch of musicians, somebody would break out an instrument and uh, songs would start up. And, and uh, the Legion Color Party as being part of our, our group would all start to sing all these wonderful old songs from their era and many of them were the old World War II songs. So that was really the uh, inspiration, I think, from the music that I grew up listening to and I learned all those words from the veterans themselves. Um, recognizing, you know, 40 years have passed and uh, all of those people whom I knew at that time, the veterans, have all passed away with the exception of two. And it wasn't until February the 10th, uh, when John Babcock, uh, our last World War I Canadian veteran, passed away that it hit me that it's not going to be much longer and we're going to lose the last of our World War II veterans. And that's what really sparked me to want to do something about that. So utilizing a lot of my music and theater skills, um, this is the best way I thought that I could um, uh, you know, pay tribute to them so I wrote this musical production, and um, and that's really what the, was the whole premise behind, you know, why why I um, why I wanted to do it? this. Over there, send the word, send the word over there that the troops are coming, the troops are coming, the drums from coming everywhere. So prepare, say a prayer, send the word, send the word. We're coming over, and we won't come back till it's over. So, AJ, when you wrote it, how big a cast did you did you anticipate for the musical at that time? Well, originally, when I wrote the show, I wrote it as a full-blown musical production, which featured a cast and crew of over fifty actors and musicians. So, last year, the Royal Canadian Legion here in Brockville asked me to come over and put on some kind of an entertainment for them in the month of November. And I got the idea, you know, recognizing the Legion isn't a theater, I got the idea of putting on a small musical tribute show with a five-person troupe. So myself, along with um, uh, uh, well-known Hall of Fame inductee, Performing Arts Hall of Fame, Mary Ross Comstock, who uh, was the music director, and three other ladies of the theater here in Brockville, Leanne um, Fredrickson, uh, Nikki Holdcroft, and uh, Ainsley Warden, uh, we put on 
a mini version of Bless Em All. So it was a five-person troupe. Um, uh, immediately following that show, and, the, and, and by the way, that show sold out in less than three days. Recognizing the Legion Hall only held 225 people, there was a lot of disappointing, disappointed people who didn't get a chance to see the show. And they expressed that um, quite vocally uh, throughout the community in the, through letters of the editor, and they called the Brockville Arts Centre as well. Um, and asking them, you know, why a show of this background and, and, uh, and this, this story wasn't at the Arts Centre. So Peter Dunn from the Arts Centre called me directly after and asked if we would bring the show to the Arts Centre for this year's um, uh, Remembrance uh, time frame. And I said, well, I said, I'll tell you what, I said, I'll do better than that. We will bring the full musical production as it was originally written to the art center. That's wonderful. So, yeah, and that, that took a little bit of, you know, that's not as easy as it sounds no. to do that. And, and certainly you need a lot of, you know, a lot of support to be able to, to put a production in place. Um, and, and first of all, it was the Brockville Operatic Society who agreed to take my show and present the show to the public. So the Operatic Society, sh technically it is the, uh, an Operatic Society show. And, uh, and I'm the show's writer. Oh. Um, uh, so, uh, so we have uh, the Operatic Society also to thank for, for bringing this uh, show. And they're to actually fruition. celebrating their, their And they're celebrating their 60th anniversary this year. Um, so this is a, a wonderful show. Um, they, they, uh, the Operatic Society put on a show um, uh, in February earlier of this year, and this will be the second show, which isn't uh, of the norm, uh, but seeing it is a, a celebratory year, uh, it it fits perfect with uh, with celebrating, you know, that that milestone. Well. AJ, what is the part that you're playing in the musical? Uh, I play the part of, uh, of the Sergeant Major. Okay. So I lead the, uh, the troops uh, through, uh, through, the, uh, uh, through the show from the beginning to the end. Now these troops, tell me a little bit about the troops. Are they, uh, are they actors or...? Yeah, yeah they are. They're, they're, they're largely made up from the Operatic Society here in Brockville, along with some other people, some, some, uh, some new people as well. Uh, in fact, one of the, uh, the cast members' father was a World War II veteran um, himself, who, whom I knew uh, quite well. The show is being directed by um, another Performing Arts Hall of Fame uh, from the area, Barry Whiteland, whose father was also, uh, a World War II veteran. He served in the RCAF, and uh, his father is still alive, actually, and doing very, very well. He just uh, celebrated his 90th birthday. So, uh, oh, so the, again, lovely. that's indicative of the age of the, the veterans that are still left. AJ, a cast of over 50, you have to have uniforms. Yes, we most certainly do, and we're really blessed that uh, I ran into and, and met an organization that's called 46th Productions. And it is made up by, of two people, Justin Walsh and Rich Lease. And Justin Walsh is an ex-military person himself, while Rich, is, uh, his business partner, is still serving in the Royal Canadian Air Force uh, as we speak. So, and they have an arsenal full of World War I and World War II vintage uniforms and, um, and all of the other equipment, etc., rifles, kit, and so on. And uh, they have supplied um, many organizations, in, uh, especially in the Toronto area and other parts of Canada, for major um, uh, professional productions as well. So we're really so fortunate to, to have those, uh, those folks on board and, and supporting and sponsoring the show as well. Musicians, let's talk a little bit about the mus musicians that are going to be accompanying this cast. Yes, well, yeah. as, as I mentioned, uh, uh, Mary Ross Comstock, mm -hmm. who's uh, with us last year, as her music director, is also going to be her music director this year as well. And she will be directing a, a small combo of musicians, a, um, a stand-up bass player uh, will be part of the group, and that's uh, Neil Wilson, a well-known musician from the area, um, Bill Bosworth from Gananoque area, a great drummer, 
and percussionist. And of course, we have a, a fantastic trumpeter, uh, Gordy Tapp from uh, the Ottawa Valley, a friend of mine whom uh, uh, is coming in to, to uh, compliment the band as well. So really, we've got, again, some very, very experienced, um, wonderful musicians that are going to be support the, the singers. There's, uh, I believe it's 27 of the most favorite number one hits from the World War II era. Songs like Kiss Me Goodnight Sergeant Major, songs like uh, The Nightingale Sang in Barclay Square, we're going to hang out the washing on the Siegfried Line, the White Cliffs of Dover, and on and on and on. It's just a, a show just chucked full of all those wonderful, lovely uh, songs. And, and the dialogue, the script, the way it's really been written, is the star of the show, even though we have 50 people involved at the show, the star of the show are the songs. And uh, the actors are the conduit, bringing those songs and the star to stage and bringing them alive uh, as we resurrect them again. And, um, uh, and, and again, it, uh, the, the dialogue is very short, but it sets up the song. And it sets up the song, the dialogue, so before the song even starts, you know what the song's going to be because of how corny and cheesy the script has been written. But it is, the show really is a very, very... Um, a very, very comedic show for the most part uh, throughout, uh, recognizing that um, uh, to, towards the end of the show there is a very tender, soft, uh, somber moment that um, uh, tells everybody that not everybody did come home from the war and, uh, and we try to do that in a very, very tasteful and meaningful way. Uh, and then after that scene, things pick up and away we go again and, uh, and we, we keep that, that kind of that happy, jovial kind of uh, thought going through through the remainder of the show. Learn about Veterans Week activities at veterans.gc.ca. Come out to Westport October 27th for the annual Random Acts of Pumpkins, Act 5. Five years ago, Westport storekeepers John and Cynthia Pringle set out to clean, carve, and illuminate 500 jack-o'-lanterns at the Westport Harbour. This year, they are attempting the Random Act once again. The Great Pumpkin Face-Off begins at 7 a.m. at Cottage Coffee. John Pringle and Mark Saunders will attempt to carve 500 pumpkins in the name of charity. Pumpkins will then be placed around the Westport Spring and Harbour. Money raised goes to the Children's Wish Foundation. For more information, log on to randomactsofpumpkins.com. Sponsored in part by BNTV. The 6th Annual Hockey Night in Leeds Grenville takes place Thursday, November 1st at Center 76 in Athens. Presented by MP Gord Brown and Tackleberry Construction, it starts at 7 p.m. The game features members of Parliament, local dignitaries, and celebrities facing off against each each other on a white and blue team. Tickets are $5 each or $10 for a family of four. All proceeds from the event are going to the United Way of Leeds Grenville. Sixth annual Hockey Night in Leeds Grenville, Thursday, November 1st at 7 p.m. at Center 76 in Athens. For more information, log on to uwleedsgrenville.org. Sponsored in part by BN TV. AJ, are there going to be any surprises, uh, meaning any guest appearances? Yeah, ab absolutely there is. We're really fortunate. Again, you know, this, this production is really a, a community production. We have a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life um, that have really stepped up to the plate to be part of this because of the content and the importance of it. We have our The Voice of Brockville, um, Bruce Wiley from JRFM uh, 104.9 um, who's a, again an icon in the community and Bruce will be playing the part of the quartermaster so he'll be the fellow that uh, the, um, the military person that issues the new recruits their, their uniforms mm -hmm, yes. and then we also have 
uh, the CEO of Price Deck Software here in Brockville, uh, Terence uh, O'Reilly. And, uh, and Ter Terry plays the part of the recruiting officer. So he recruits the new recruits, of course, and Terry also is going to be singing in the show as well. Now, so, is this the first time that, that Mr. O'Reilly has performed? Well, I think in a, in a, certainly in a musical production. I'm not certain if he's been in a musical okay. production before, but he's not appeared and sung uh, uh, in, in a show before. So I think there's going to be a lot of surprised people when they hear Terry, and they're going to be blown away because he not only has a wonderful speaking voice, he has a, an outstanding singing voice. And uh, he really does a great job at, uh, at his role. Uh, when we talk about celebrities, we have yes. some political uh, people involved with the show as well, uh, from different um, levels of government. We have, uh, uh, and, and these, these politicians will play um, uh, the same role, but in different shows. So we have three individuals. The first individual is um, uh, a local fellow, uh, Senator Bob Runciman and he will be playing the part of the commanding officer in the Friday night show, November 9th, uh, sat, followed by Saturday afternoon, where our MPP, Steve Clark, will be filling that role. And our last show uh, that evening, November 10th, will be filled by our Member of Parliament, Gord Brown. So again, I, I think it really, really shows that um, you know recognizing these people are very very busy individuals doing yes. what it is that they do but they certainly um, recognize the importance of the, the the message of this show and what it really is designed to do and uh, and they were they were more than thrilled to be wanting to be part of this show as well for that reason so it, it's 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 a great that we have those uh, gentlemen, you know, on board as well. I understand that a block of tickets were already bought by the Brockville Country Club. Yes, the, the Brock, Brockville Country Club has is, is, um, purchased a, uh, a significant amount of tickets and they're holding, um, to help support the show, they're holding a dinner and a show. So if people wish to have dinner before the show, as a lot of people do, uh, they can certainly take advantage of a, of a package where you have dinner at the country club, and then immediately following that, we just walk up the street to, uh, to the art center and, uh, and see the show there as well. So those tickets, if people are interested in going to a dinner show, uh, that package, they can call the Brockville um, country. country Club directly at uh, 613-342-2468 and uh, they can arrange for their, uh, their, their tickets and dinner there. Is it true that you received a letter from the force's sweetheart? Yes. For those who are out there who know the, who I'm talking That's about? That's right. Certainly people in our demographic group <laughs> and, and up will know who this, this individual is. It's a Dame Vera Lynn, who is now 95 years of age. And, uh, and of course, as, as, as you're certainly well aware of, she was the, uh, one of the troop sweethearts that, that traveled all throughout uh, various parts of, uh, of, uh, of Europe um, and Africa, um, uh, singing and entertaining the troops, visiting a lot of the wounded uh, when they were in the hospitals and so on. Um, and I wrote Vera Lynn a letter um, a short time ago and um, uh, explain to her what it was we were doing here in Canada and in Brockville and uh, and and explain to her how um, her her the songs that she many of the songs she recorded and sang um, were going to be um, singing in the show mm -hmm. and what an inspiration she was to me in writing this show and uh, and largely a lot of those songs are the ones that uh, that will be will be um, singing so she sent me back this lovely, lovely letter, and uh, and basically said that you know we need to continue doing things like this and putting on these kind of shows to remember, remember, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to remind people that um, freedom doesn't come at uh, you know. At, there's always at, a cost associated. Th there's a isn't very, there? very um, yes. significant cost to mm -hmm. it, and there has been, and uh, and it comes in the forms of lives. And, uh, and she, she, she was very encouraging, saying we need to continue doing these things. Um, so anyway, it was a, a wonderful 
gem to have is yes. a, a letter from, from Dame Vera Lynn. Well, I think, that, you know, the other thing I've mentioned, I've, I've talked a lot about the people in the, in the production mm -hmm. that are members of the Performing Arts Hall of Fame, but there's a lot of other people too that are um, life members of the Operatic Society itself. Um, on a variety of different fronts and cer certainly some of them whether they were behind the scenes people or whether they are the actors we we've, we've again have a, a wonderful star-studded cast made up largely from the operatic society and other parts of the community from people that have been in a lot of theater productions Callie Tripp being one of them uh, Peter Lynch Mike Frisk three leading ladies that 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 I mentioned earlier as well have all been in the show another leading lady who I've had the pleasure of being in a few productions with uh, Trisha Herbison will also be in the show and uh, singing Gillian Rayner um, is is in the show and Gillian along with Raul Cerny both grew up in England during the war years when um, when England was being bombed so as little yeah. children they certainly remember w from life experience what the war was all about as yes. well so there's a lot of celebrities a lot of uh, well-known people actors behind the scenes people and so on politicians and celebrities in the show so we're very very excited about bringing this musical tribute as a thank you that serves as a thank you to the veterans of World War II, letting them know that we do remember, we haven't forgotten, and we never will, and mm -hmm. uh, recognize that you know not everybody did come home. Right. And um, and and lastly, the the show is also being used as a tool mm -hmm. to promote remembrance across the board. And uh, we talk about remembrance. That's all of our veterans, not just our World War II veterans, mm -hmm. but all the people that have served our country and all of the the wars and conflicts. And certainly, uh, you know, uh, uh, in paying respect to the people that are continuing to serve our country and that are standing on guard for thee as we speak. So um, that's what this show is really all about as well. Thank you, AJ. And My good pleasure. luck with the show. What do they say? Break a leg. Yes. Thank you. Performances are Friday, November 9th at 7.30 p.m., Saturday, November 10th with a matinee at 2 p.m., and Saturday evening at 7.30 p.m. Tickets for all three performances are available at the Brockville Arts Centre box office on King Street West in Brockville and are priced at $10 for students, $20 for everyone else. The funds raised will be donated to the Brockville Royal Canadian Legion Branch 96. Rockville, Dale Elliott, BN TV News.